Hey yo, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day. From the blessing, like I always say, is one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. Damn, man, it's crazy, man. I left my door open to my studio, and I went to work, and my dog chewed up, like, I want to say at least five or six hats. Like, ripped this part off right here. My good hats, too, man. I left them on the ground on accident, but, um, because I'm still hooking up shelves, so I'm kind of butthurt about that, but so I'm rocking these old 15 for $30 off uh, Amazon, but it's all good. Gotta, gotta get some more hats, though. I love my dog, so can't do no wrong. I don't want to punish him. But anyways, I seen this video. It was with the rapper Big Rome, a Norteño rapper. He got some big names. He's collaborated with big names. He got some big streams, good views. You know, that was, um, I remember talking to a girl one time and she was thinking that I still oh, still wasn't Norteño and she was like, hey, you don't bump Big Rome? And I was like, no, for one. And for two, who's that? Because I'm pretty sure you're asking me if I bump Northerner music still. And I had to tell her that I wasn't a Northerner and then I had to tell her I don't really listen to that guy. And then I started catching wind of who he was and who he is and, you know, he's a Norteño rapper that's made some bangers and a lot of people have streamed his songs. But I never followed the guy on Instagram. I've never uh, really paid too much attention to him. A lot of people told me some specific details about him that I didn't even care to elaborate all over YouTube for. But what I've seen today is that um, he was pretty much posted on his own personal page. A video of him like with his head down as I'm showing you across the screen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mute the audio on the basis that, but I'm going to tell you what it's about. First, he's saying that his mom's poisoning him. She's trying to poison him to take his life so he she can get the, his insurance money. And then, like, you could tell he's kind of, like, in and out of it, saying that his stomach's hurt. He's been uh, duking blood and peeing blood. And, you know, he just looks sick. He looks like he's on one. He looks like he's on a good one. It could be a lot of different things. And uh, he said that uh, she'd done it before. She tried to poison him, like, before. This is, like, her second time. And then he said he went to jail for bullets because she planted the bullets. And she's the one that called the cops on him. So he's just throwing his mom under the bus, right? So I start reading the comments and the two things that trip me off for one, if this is a serious matter, you don't have to post something like that all over social media for what? That's like attention seeking. And I'm only saying that because, you know, I'm actually a lot of people made fun of this video and I'm actually one of those ones that's going to seem like I'm concerned, but only to an extent because I know the dude don't care about me. Nobody cares when it comes to Northern California and Northern Chicanos and Norteños. They don't really care what I have to say, right? But I see this, and there's a couple of people that actually knew him personally. They were like, man, Rome, take this down, man. Take this down. You need help. You need to go to the hospital. There was quite a few people that told him, like, man, if that was really the case and he feels like he was poisoned, he needs to go to the hospital, but he shouldn't be posting about it. And then a lot of people were like, man, that's that Skonte stories, man. Them Skonte days, bro. He's on a sick one. You know, people were quick to uh, crucify him in those comment sections as well. So if this video is true, for one, you ain't got to put you and your mama's business all out there. If you guys are feuding and you guys have a personal relationship that's getting out of control, getting out of hand, those allegations and accusations can stay off social media. I like to think that social media could be broadcasted for, you know, publicizing yourself and promoting yourself or showing your life. You know, you know, a lot of people put their business out there like to a certain degree and on certain levels that are beyond me just for the attention. Sometimes people use social media for attention. Now, like I say, if this was for attention, then he got a lot of people's attention from it. But it's in no way, shape, or form, you know, could I agree and just laugh at it and really think like, man, this fool's doing this for this. Ah, he's just doing it for some clout. He's doing it for some attention. Because I've seen dudes literally like do these sad TikTok stories and like these ph philosophical comments and pretend like they're all stressed out and have girls been in their DMs like, hey, man, I'll be there for you. You need anything? And then he starts sleeping with her and he's like, yeah, was, you know, I got laid, you know, you know, just baiting people in for, for attention and for comfort. But like I said, for one, putting your mama's business out there, a lot of people were in the comment section was like, damn, fool, you snitching on his mom like that. I'm like, man, we got to forget that whole gang aspect that he's just gang member. So he can't be telling he's snitching. I don't want to hear none of that. For one, he is broadcasting all over his Instagram page of what his mom's doing to him, which 
if it was looked into and if it was the case, then yeah, that that video could be used as evidence to convict his mom if they're in fact he's infected or has poison in him. So that's why I looked at it like a serious matter because even if it was just for attention, it's like, bro, you're throwing your mom under the bus, man. Cops see this, man. Cops are going to get involved. Cops are going to want to investigate. You're going to put your mom in a bind, bro, if these, if these accusations are false. But then I started thinking like, all right, maybe he is on a sick one. That might be, you know, I don't know that man's uh, struggles. Some people turn to dope to have fun and party and just live a, you know, what I mean, a rock star life. But then some people turn to it because, you know, it's just their addiction, their misery, their their escape from reality. A lot of people have different reasonings for indulging. So if that's the case, and, you know, like I said, I thought he was a successful rapper. He has some good songs. He streams. Everybody talks about him. I know a lot of women that slapped his music. A lot of people know that California bump his music. You know, sometimes he comes up on my playlist as a recommendation. You know, I skip it because I'm not really that fan of that music. But still, you know, he got something going for him. He has a lot going on, you know, a rap career. Whether it's successful or not, he's still, he's still a persona that represents Northern California for Norteño rappers. And then the one thing that dawned on me out of all these comments is like, bro, where's your homies at, bro? Like, where are they at? I didn't see not one Norteño that he ever collabed with, that he ever associated with, that he shook hands with, called his brother, called his Norteño partner, whatever you name it. None of them ran to his rescue. Now, they probably ran to his message, but that video was up for a very long time. A very long time. I don't know if it's still up or not. But, like, there was no support in that comment section other than from, like, from what I read, like, three or four people. And there were, there were people that were close to him. Mostly women were like, man, you need to go to the hospital if you're sick, if that's really the case. But you shouldn't be posting this. And I agree with the whole not posting part. Like, don't, don't, you don't need to put that out there. Even if you're on a sick one and this is all in your head. If you're going to be on a sick one, there's no need to put it publicly. You know, you're dealing with some demons that you're you're failing to address. You're dealing with an addiction that's going to overpower you mentally where you thought it was okay and you thought it was appropriate to post, you know, allegations against your mother and what you're going through and how sick you are all over social media laying in bed. Like, you got to recognize, man, that once you get overpowered by that dope, if this is the case, like, you're going to make some decisions that you're going to regret later, including this post. So that's something he needs to address if this is the case, man, because I don't want to like, I don't care if that dude probably gun me down because I'm not part of the faction no more. I really don't care. But to see somebody struggling like this all over social media, I mean, social media is for entertainment. We're supposed to be having fun. We're supposed to be, you know, having our opinions. We're supposed to be building channels. We're supposed to be making music. We're supposed to be just being ourselves. And showing the world who we are, what our lives are like, what we're about. But not in the sense where, you know, we're broadcasting our struggles, where we could talk about them. You know, it's a form of healing, mental healing. But not in this sense, where you're posting about what's, what you're going through and if you're on a sick one or not. And, you know, who's out to get you and somebody's poisoning you. Like, it's just a bad look. But... It's a reminder that this one video, I've seen multiple videos. Man, there's a YouTube channel that I trip out on. It's called Tales from the Streets. I like the title of it when I first seen it. So what this dude does is he actually goes around different cities, man. He finds homeless people that are, you know, fighting addiction or indulging in addiction or refuse to shake their addiction. They love their circumstances. They love being homeless. They love digging for scraps. They love digging for food. They love digging for a home to stay with that, whatever the case may be. They love just collecting a little bit amount of money just for the high for the day. They just wake up just to get high today and just, you know, roam the streets, should I say. And I see a lot of those personalities, man, and I'd be like, man, dude, like I was a dope fiend for a long time, man. I was a drug addict, bro, but prison kept me from probably ending up like these people because once the dope was gone, bro, I had to kick it or I had to wait. I had to heal. I had to eat. I had to work out. I had to drink. I had a program, I had a function, you know, prison forced me to do all these things when there was no dope around. And when there was no dope around, man, I used to become an ugly person. Like I wanted pills, I wanted this, I, anything to get me lightheaded, anything to change my brain for a little bit or get rid of the pain. You know, so I watch that channel sometimes every once in a while and I just be like, man, there's a lot of people in this world throwing their lives away. And some of them don't even care that their lives are getting thrown away. They just love what they do. Like, they want to die partying to death knowing that they did what they wanted to do. Sucks. Ugly reality. 
So like I'm saying, I'm, I can't make no accusations other than what I've seen with the video. And the only two perceptions that I have is on the basis that everybody else shared their opinion. It was either they were saying he was on Scante or they were saying like, man, you know, don't be putting this all over social media. Your problems, your personal problems when it comes to your family. Especially that we all know law enforcement be tagging people. Really be catching up to people on Instagram for what they post now. I'm going to do a video on something that I've seen recently. But still though. I was like, man, where's all your homies at that you claim you have? And all I seen was a Unity video that got posted five hours ago with a bunch of Norteños and No Jumper dissing Southerners. So while you guys are too busy looking for fortune and fame and recognition and you guys are on big podcasts, you guys are in L.A. just for temporary, you know, fun and recreational activities and you got to go back to Northern California anyways. It's not like you're going to stay there for a month and really wander those streets. Still, though, like they're over here focused on themselves and one of their most inspiring homies that was putting it down for the Norte, putting it down for Norteño rap, has been a Norteño rapper for God knows how long. And he's over there battling demons, struggling. I don't see nobody running to that man's rescue. It's like dude's down on his luck right now and his own homies over there just having a great time doing for themselves and in overall reality that's what everybody's doing nowadays. Everybody's paying attention to themselves. Everybody's focused on themselves. You know we all can be come together as friends and as brothers and as homies but I'm telling you bro when you're down on your luck bro you're going to see who's really there for you and who really has your back and who's really going to extend your hand because I didn't see but three people in that comment section. Maybe it changed. Maybe it's different. But I only seen like three people in that comment section were really like extending their hand to him. Like, bro, call me. Hit me up, man. Take this down. Hit me up. Want to talk? You need to talk. Everybody else just roasted him. Just, just dragged him. Just gassed him the whole time. And I'm like, bro, like, do you see not only what you post and how you're acting and the way you look in your post, but most important, do you see what people are saying about you? You do realize that. It's on social media. A lot of people are going to remember it. A lot of people are going to share it. A lot of people are going to talk about it. And maybe four or five months, you're going to be like, man, I shouldn't have posted that. Maybe, man, I was on a bad one. I was just, it was bad or I shouldn't, I, my situation was ugly. People ain't going to forget that. And they're probably going to hold it against you because that's what YouTube and social media is for, man. Whatever you put, somebody will hold it against you somewhere down the road. It's just what people do. So most importantly, all I'm saying is this, man, um. When it comes to your personal business, like I've slipped once or twice every now and then, like I'll post something how I feel and, you know, sometimes it'll be like sarcastic humor. I'm like, whatever. And then people really, I've watched my subscribers literally when I posted certain things that were like emotional when I was just going through it. Dude, the last time I posted something, I was like, man, all I could say is I don't know if I could do this anymore, you guys. Bro, maybe like 49 regular comments and then I had to go to my request for people that I don't follow and answer like 16 more. Everybody's like, you're all right, bro, what happened? And I had to explain to everybody, like, man, it's just personal problems, you know, one after the other, one after the other, one after the other. And at some point, you kind of just be like, bro, damn, I just quit already. You know, you get into those moments. Every man goes through those moments, man. We stress out a lot, but, you know, we got to stay focused and stay responsible. But a lot of people thought I was going to turn to dope. A lot of people thought I was going to catch a case. And I'm like, you know, it was it was gratifying. It, I was thankful to see that people ran to my rescue. People wanted to talk to me. People wanted to make sure I was all right. Now, I can only hope the same for this guy. I know he don't care about me. I know he's an Orteño that everybody's going to assume and make the the judgment, pre-judgment that I'm being uh, sympathetic to him. I don't really care what that man's bandana looks like or what his tattoo on his forehead looks like. All I seen was a dude really going through it, really struggling. And I've seen how my subscribers turn to me so I can only hope his fan base, people that follow him, people that got love for him or his homies that share that same bandana, show that man some love and, and, and reach out to him like, bro, you all right, man? Take it down, man. Clear your mind. Do this. Do that. That's all you can only hope for anybody in this world because we're going through a lot of struggling times, bro. A lot of struggling times. I see people all over social media talk about their struggles and talk about what they're going through. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm sympathetic to a lot of those videos, even though I hardly ever talk about them. I feel like those are subjects that need to be talked about. But people are going through it. Everybody, everybody in this world has something that they're going through, a battle that they're dealing with, an addiction that they're trying to get over, struggle with life, struggle with bills, struggle with home, struggle with family, struggle with love. You know what I mean? It's, whatever your struggle is, man. You know, my audience members, the times that I've, you know, felt down and felt like, man, humiliated, embarrassed, or, 
you know, just like giving up. My my subscribers came through like, man, keep your head up, man. Keep your chin up, man. God got a plan. Keep going. And then my mind will be clear the next day. So hopefully the next day this mind's, this man's mind's clear and he's thinking a little bit better. I don't know what his problem was, but I just trip out how... I just trip out that even if you posted a video, you know, expressing your concerns, expressing your struggles, expressing anything, you know, some people just get caught up in the heat of the moment and post, not realizing that, you know, some something shouldn't be posted on social media. Keep it to yourself, you know, deal with deal with it with personal people, personal family members, your, your small circle. But people are quick to just bash you. Nobody was really concerned about that dude other than, hey, Scante Warrior, ah, Scante Tales, uh. Oh, he on a sick one. Like, bro, even if he was on a sick one, bro, like, you try being on a sick one for months and you can, you're afraid of that come down or you're afraid of what the body, how the body is going to take it and react to it when you ain't have it no more. Or when you're afraid to, to let go of that addiction because you're scared of life. You're scared, you're scared to be normal. You know, I hate, I, you know, I hate it. That I kicked my dope for a very long time. I came out here and really kept forward. Like I don't want to drink. I don't want to smoke. I don't want to indulge. I don't want to go back to it. To be honest with you. Sobriety was been, has been the hardest battle for me. Because. Like I'm afraid to go outside. I'm afraid to kick it with people. I'm afraid to do a lot of things. On the basis that I'm, af I'm afraid that I'm going to indulge. I'm going to get sucked right back into it. And I'm going to lose it all that easy. Because you can lose it all fast if you're using dope. You can lose it fast. Quicker than you ever gained it. All that hard work you took to gain and make those achievements and get you where you're at. Man, and indulging just temporarily. Just temporarily can lead you down a, a path in destruction. And it'll destroy everything faster than you ever gained it. So that's why I do it. But there's been moments in society where I'm just like, bro, this life is Oh my God, bro! I need, I need to change. You know, I'm not going out there and networking with people. That's how usually people, you know, network and socialize. You know, conventional type stuff. You know, I can't go talk to girls and get them in my music videos because I don't drink. I don't go to bars. That's where they're normally at. Or I'll go to a restaurant and eat a torta with a torta or a couple of homegirls. So I can't do it. And if I want to go collab with other people, I got to show up where they're smoking hella weed and, and drinking and popping and, and sipping lean. I'm like, I don't want to be around that, so I'm not going to be around them. And if I can't be around them, how am I going to ask to collab? You know, I've ruined a lot of chances for myself on the basis that I chose to be a homebody and stay at home. But yeah, I, I do put my personal business out there in the open because I'm already done with that that life. I've I, I battled my demons, man. I still battle them to this day, but... I'm where I need to be where I could talk about him and not worry about it. So I can only hope, man, the next day that this man wakes up, he's in a better place. He's in a better mood. And if the circumstances are real where he feels like his mom's doing that to him, then, you know, seek help, bro. Your first option shouldn't have been to publicize it all over Instagram. Like, you really need to seek help. So that's my personal opinion and that's my personal video today. Um, I plan on doing these when I come home, you know, something to exercise my brain a little bit. So forgive me if I'm dropping two videos a day. I know I'm probably overwhelming a lot of people, but honestly, I got like three more videos I got to do. Just saw stuff I've seen on social media that I want to talk about. So, you know, you guys giving me a platform where I can sit here and talk publicly and openly about anything. And you guys give me a chance. So thank you guys, man. And thank you to everybody that ever tuned in and, uh, and checked on me when my times are down. So with that being said, like I always say, it's one life, one chance. When we got one chance to do this right, let's get it done. Peace.